an international team of researchers are focused on the Gulf of Mexico. There we go. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. I'm Matt Damon. Please join me on a journey marked by unexpected twists and turns. My name is David Hollander. I'm a professor in the College of Marine Science at the University of South Florida, located in St. Petersburg, Florida. In geology, there's a great idiom. It says the present is the key to the past, but the past provides a window to see into the future. And so with our understanding of the processes in the Northern Gulf in association with the Deepwater Horizon, we were able to go back and study a blowout from 1979, 1980 in the Southern Gulf of Mexico, the Ixtoc blowout to give us a prediction about how the northern Gulf of Mexico is returning. So again, the present is the heat of the past, but the past provides a clear window to see into the future and allowed us to predict how long we think the uh, northern Gulf will be impacted. Research took Hollander and his team to Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. They were searching for a remote mangrove forest that local fishermen said was hit hard by the Ixtoc spill almost 40 years earlier. It gets into a pretty wet area, so you may sink in a bit. Field work is never easy. Or a lot wet. But this location was almost impossible. The temperature was well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the jungle was infested with malaria-causing mosquitoes. It took a hard three-hour journey before reaching their destination. The team's immediate goal was to collect tree and soil samples. Once back at their Florida lab, they will check if any of the remnants of oil were still toxic, as well as how long it took for the ecosystem to recover oh, from yeah. the impact of the Xtox yeah, spill. Yeah. It smells oil. It smells similar to like the tar on, on a road. The tar, yeah. yeah. What we saw in the southern Gulf of Mexico was that sites returned uh, between seven and ten years. So it takes about a decade for the system to purge itself, clean itself, and restore itself. We are only six to seven years into the northern Gulf of Mexico studies, and indeed we've seen some sites come back, but clearly not all of them. And what is another difficult thing to understand is that the community that actually is coming back to the northern Gulf of Mexico was not the community which was there before the blowout. The community returns, but it doesn't restore itself to the exact position ecologically or physiologically as one predicted. It actually is an evolution in the ecology to another stable state. Keeping in mind that the Deepwater Horizon event was the first deep water blowout that had ever been recorded in the history of oil and gas exploration. Our legacy is really remarkable. During the next blowout that will occur, and we don't know when it will occur or where it will occur, but it will occur, the scientists at that time are going to provide an incredible insight into how they're going to deal with the next disaster, which, as we know, it's across all seven ocean basins, whether it's in Africa or South America, Australia, the Indo-Asian continent. So I think we've played a really important role in terms of uh, the legacy that a bad situation allows us to really provide insights that will help for those that are going to be impacted by the next bad event. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered. <laughs>